Hi everyone. In this video, I'm gonna formulate a starter diet for poultry. It doesn't matter for broilers, layers, whatever. This method is the same. So actually, as I described in my previous videos about super pre-starter diet, during the early life, chickens, you know, do not have mature gut and we really need to help them by providing nutritious diet. And to do that, we really need to forget about least cost feed formulation method because least cost feed formulation method is for a period of time or let's say a period of life that chickens are not sensitive. I mean, their gut do not have any problem regarding digestion and absorption, and they are strong enough, you know, to digest and absorb the nutrients. And also, let's say during the uh, grower or finisher period, they are consuming lots of food and it makes sense to um, provide a cheap diet. But for the starter diet or for the pre-starter diet, their feed consumption is really low and it doesn't make sense from economical standpoint to restrict their, you know, uh, nutrition. So that's why we really need to get rid of uh, least cost feed formulation and just we need to turn off the feed for, uh, least cost feed formulation option in our uh, feed formulation software and formulate a diet just based on their nutritional requirements. So I'm going to just share my screen with you and start our feed formulation. So we are going to formulate a starter diet or pre-starter diet without least cost feed formulation method. And by the way, I'm Mohammed Afruziye. I'm a research associate at the University of Alberta, and it's my honor to share my knowledge in the field of animal nutrition with you guys. So in this video, actually, I'll cover three main topics. First, how to turn off the LCF method, LCF stands for least cost feed formulation. And then I'll describe a little bit about limitation of feed ingredients in a starter or pre-starter diet. And if we encounter any infeasible diet, we really need to solve the problem. And I'll explain uh, how we can solve an infeasible diet by creating enough room for energy or protein ingredients. So if you have not watched my uh, video about using Excel uh, for least cost feed formulation method, I really encourage you to do that and I'll post the link up here so you can just follow that link and first get familiar with uh, using Excel for feed formulation. And then you can come to this video and um, continue learning about uh, using spreadsheet for a feed formulation without least cost method. So I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see these uh, 
part better. So if you remember in my uh, previous video about using Excel for least cost with formulation, I explained that uh, under nutrient constraints, we are going to put nutrient requirements. And we are just uh, extracting these values from manual guide. In that video, I formulated a diet for grower phase. That's why we used the least cost fit formulation method. But in this video, we are going to formulate a starter diet and we are not interested in least cost method. Instead, we are interested in providing a nutritious and excellent diet for our chicks. So this method will apply for starter and pre-starter diets. So if you just search, you know, manual guides, let's say about RAS 308 broiler nutrition specification 2021, you can just download the PDF about their nutrient requirements. So if you scroll down here, you will find nutrient specification for broilers and based on target live weight, uh, the nutrient requirements will be a little bit different. For example, this table is for under 1.6 kg. If you are aiming at higher target live weight, for example, I mean uh, market weight, you can use other tables as well. For example, in table two, the nutrient requirements are provided for a live target body weight um, between 1.7 to 2.4 kg. And in table three, it's for live body weight uh, between 2.5 and 3 kg. But anyways, uh, it just, you know, related to your decision about uh, target body weight, market target body weight at the end of cycle. And based on that, you can uh, carry on. So in my previous video, we formulated a diet for a grower phase and we used this column. But now we are going to use a starter column. So if we look here, energy level is 3000. So I'm just going to write down three and for the maximum one, we can leave it for 3.1 for now. So actually three megacalorie per kilogram. It's the uh, unit that we are using. So here it says kilocalorie per kilogram. I just need to change it to megacalorie per, per kilogram because our units, our values are based on megacalorie per kilogram here. If I would, you know, write based on kilocalorie per kilogram, in that case, I should have written 3000. But just for simplicity, I'm going to use uh, lower values with megacalorie per kilogram. But it doesn't matter. It's up to you. You can use any unit that you want. Okay, so the next up, uh, nutrient is protein. If we look at the protein requirement, for protein, you can see um, we need to provide the 23% protein. So I'm just going to change it to 23%. And the maximum value would be 23.5%. For the calcium, 0 0.96. So I'm just gonna write it down. 
for available phosphorus you can see here uh, row number nine it's for available phosphorus and for this um, it is 0 0.48 so I'm just going to type 0 0.48 for sodium and chloride I have explained in my previous videos that uh, the range for sodium and chloride is between 0 0.16 to 0 0.23 percent but because we are not sure about our water i mean the sodium and chloride level in our water that's why we would like to consider the lower range it means that 0 0.16 for sodium and for chloride so for lysine if we look here the total amount of uh, the total amino acid level for lysine is 1.44 and i'm going to write it down so previously this file uh, was for grower diet based on the video that I uh, created for uh, least cost feed formulation. So here we are going to change the nutrient requirements for starter diet. So for methionine, the level of methionine is 0 0.56. I'm just going to right to 0 0.56 and for methionine and the cysteine we have 1.08 1.08 and then for threonine the level of threonine should be 0 0.97 0 0.97 and for tryptophan it should be 0 0.23 0 0.23 okay so so far we have included the nutrient requirements for starter diet and now we can formulate our diet just you know to double check when we change the nutrient requirements what will happen to our final formula our final formula is here and also i have put here as well if you watch that previous video that i'll post the link up here you will see how i did that so now i'm going just to i went to data tab and then i pressed solver and now i'm going to solve this look here Sub, uh, for our objective cell it is uh, cell v3 which is cost diet cost and we needed to uh, put it as minimum it means that we, are, we were going to formulate a diet in such a way to get minimum price. So, least cost with formulation. I'm just trying this to show you how would be the formula before and after changing the uh, target. It means that first our target would be least cost method and then our target would be uh, without least cost method or just based on having a, a nutritious diet so i'm just going to press solve so solver found the solution and all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied so if i press ok now i can see my formula uh, 
43% is corn, and you can see soy oil is 3.86. So now just look at this formula, the final uh, inclusion rate of ingredients. I'm going to change the target of our feed formulation. It means that we do not want to formulate this diet, starter diet, based on least cost feed formulation method. So to do that, I'm just going to change the target cell. So I press this uh, arrow, and here I'm going to choose V6. V6 is the dietary energy level. So I'm going here to put value of instead of minimum. And I'm going to set my energy level at 3 megacalorie per kilogram. So I put 3. Now I'm going to press the solve. It means that instead of formulating diet based on least cost method, I'm going to formulate my diet just to, you know, set the energy level. And here in the subject to the constraints, I have put all the constraints about other nutrients like protein, amino acids, and minerals. And again, you can watch uh, my previous video about least cost feed formulation, and you will see how we uh, set this up. So I'm going to press solve. And now the formula changed. If you look, the corn level went up all the way to 63%. And this diet is not using soybean oil. And canola is 9.17%. So it shows that by changing the formulation target from least cost method to without least cost method or let's say based on just nutrient requirements of chickens our formula changed but now we are going to double check the uh, inclusion levels of each ingredient and see if they are based on the limitation of ingredients or not. If they are uh, under acceptable level, that's okay. But if they are above acceptable level, we need to uh, decrease their amounts. So for corn, we don't have any problem with uh, starter or pre-starter diet but here if you look for fish meal actually it's used at 16.69 percent which is really high for a starter diet and also for other diets so i'm just going to put a maximum of two percent because especially in starter diet, we don't want to use lots of fish meal. First, fish meal is expensive. Second, it's not available in some places, some locations. And also, uh, it has other problems related to uh, digestibility and also in some places, you know, they are mixing it with uh, feather meal and or poultry byproduct. And 
you know, to increase their profit, but in fact, they are cheating, right? They are selling you a low quality fish meal and we need to uh, pay attention to the quality of fish meal. Or in some cases, we have some problem with storage of animal uh, source protein, for example, fish meal. These kinds of ingredients are really susceptible for uh, microbial activity and uh, degradation of protein, which will increase their TVN or total volatile nitrogen. And if it goes up, it means that, uh, you know, fish meal was under uh, microbial activities and it lowered its quality. And by having a high amount of TVN, actually you are going to hurt your chicken's uh, metabolism and gut health. That's why we need to uh, be careful about using animal source proteins in uh, poultry diets, spe specifically in starter or pre-starter diet. That's why I uh, put a maximum level of 2%. So I'm going to solve the diet again. Please pay specific attention to each step that I'm going through and uh, it will help you to understand the concepts of feed formulation. I just press solve and again everything is okay. Solver found the solution. I'm going to press okay and double check our feed ingredients levels. So here I can see for the soybean oil, uh, column E, the inclusion rate is 4.21%. So 4% soybean oil for grower diet and finisher diet would be okay, but not with starter diet. Because as I described in uh, super pre starter diets actually uh, chickens you know during early life they have immature gut and they do not have enough lipase for digestion of fat and also they cannot really absorb the fat because of limitations in the bile salts and other stuff. So that's why we need to restrict the amount of oil or fat in the starter diet. So I'm going to put 1% as maximum level for oil during starter diet. And I'm going to solve it again. So I just press solver and I'm uh, solving this diet. Now look here. It says solver could not find a feasible solution. It means that this formula that now I am getting is not a balanced formula. I'm going to press OK. So I know I shouldn't use this formula because it's not balanced, because there is problem, it's infeasible diet. But now I'm going to figure out why it happened. So it is obvious based on our previous uh, steps, we limited the amount of protein source, especially you know if, if we just compare fish meal protein level with uh, soybean meal, you can see uh, fish meal has 60% protein. And it means that by adding just a little bit fish meal, we could have 
balanced our protein level, which was 23% for a starter diet. But we limited the amount of fish meal in our diet to 2%. It means that we are not allowing the uh, software, you know, to use fish meal to balance the protein. And on the other hand, we are limiting the energy source. As you know, uh, among energy ingredients, oil has highest level of energy. So if you look here, we do have 8.5 megacalorie per kilogram energy for oil, but for corn, for example, it is just 3.35 megacalorie per kilogram. So again, we are restricting the amount of high energy ingredient, soybean oil, in our diet. It means that we are closing the, the software, software's hands. We are not allowing our software to, you know, fluctuate the numbers and find the uh, feasible solution. That's why at the end of the day, it says, I give up. It's not possible to formulate a diet with these restrictions that you as a operator put in my uh, memory. So now to solve this problem, I need to create room for energy and protein ingredients. As I showed you here, we are facing a, an infeasible diet and we are going to create room. So to do that, we need to add a high protein ingredient like fish meal in the diet. I mean, not fish meal, a high protein ingredient similar to fish meal that has higher protein. But without those limitations for fish meal, animal source protein. So I'm going to add soy protein concentrate. Previously, I have put the uh, nutrient composition of soybean protein concentrate here. I'm just going to copy it. And in this tab, I'm going to just paste it here. Let's say instead of dried away, I'm going to use uh, soybean, soy protein concentrate. So when I'm pasting, I'm just pasting the values. So here, because you know we didn't use dried whey uh, in our previous uh, diet, and also in this diet, we are not interested in using that. So I just uh, pasted in that column. But you can create a new column and paste it over there. It's up to you. So now we have the nutrient composition of soybean, soy protein concentrate here. I don't have the cost for soy protein, which is okay, because I'm not formulating based on least cost feed formulation method, and um, that wouldn't really, uh, you know, influence my diet formula. So for the maximum level of soy protein concentrate, uh, it can be used up to 12% in pre-starter and starter diets. So for the maximum level, I just put 12% for uh, soy protein. I'm going to minimize a little bit so you can see what's going on here in the formula. And again, from data tab, I'm going to choose a solver and solve it again. Now, 
We have a feasible diet. Solver found the solution. And we are pressing OK. And we are going to just double check our final formula. Again, you can double check from here, uh, you know, row 21, or you can uh, double check the formula from uh, this column. They are the same. They are connected to each other if you watch the previous video. So corn 63%. We don't have wheat. We don't have wheat middlings. Soybean oil is 1%, which is good for a starter diet or pre-starter diet. It's good. Canola 7%, soybean meal 10%, fish meal 2%, oyster or you can use limestone, doesn't matter, 0.57%, dicalcium phosphate, 1.6%, lysine, 0.31%, it means that 3.1 kg per ton, which is good. DL-methionin, uh, 0.32% or 3.2 kg, kg per ton, again, is good. Uh, so sodium bicarbonate, 0%. Again, if you watch the pre-starter diet, I explained it really, uh, it's not really good uh, to use sodium bicarbonate in pre-starter diet because it can neutralize the pH, you know, and we need to have a acid, acidific, uh, acidic <laughs> diet for pre-starter diet. Soy protein concentrate, 12%, theronin 0.11% or 1.1 kilogram per ton. Vitamin and mineral premix, 0.25%, which is good. And the salt, 0.15%, or uh, 1.5 kilogram per ton. So, in my opinion, it's a good starter diet for broilers. Again, for layers, for Broiler breeders for turkeys, all you know, you can use the same idea. The idea of feed formulation is the same. The only thing that you need to consider, the main thing is nutrient requirements that you need to put in the uh, nutrient constraints columns. So I hope you enjoyed the video. You learned, you know, how to turn off least cost option in feed formulation software. And as always, please let me know if you have any questions down there in the comments. And please feel free to subscribe to the channel and please Feel free to share this video and other videos with any people who might be interested in animal science. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.